Hi everyone, in this exam and content, we will be dissecting this particular paper looking at a vegan or plant-based diet and its impact on individuals who are overweight as well as its impact on a metabolic or diabetes related marker. Now I'm not gonna go over every single slide or every single figure of this paper, but if you would like to go through each figure, then I will have this paper linked for you to follow along and read along as we go through figure by figure. So with that said, if that's what you wanna find out about, then stick around for this exam in peace. Let's get to it. Okay, let's jump into the methods section of this paper. They looked at human subjects and they were primarily women who were either overweight or obese but non-diabetic. They were assigned two different diets. One group was assigned the vegan condition, the other group was told to be the control condition in which they just consumed what they normally consumed. They were instructed not to change their physical activity levels and the calories were not controlled for, but they did measure calories. And the dietary records were collected by a registered dietitian for three days. Now here is where things start getting a little bit wonky, right from the first figure or table that we're gonna be looking at. So in this particular table, they're essentially showing a ton of information. Most of it is dominated by the amino acids that make up each of their conditions. So for the vegan group, how much of each amino acid did they consume? How much total protein did they consume? How many calories did they consume? Physical activity, energy expenditure, things of that nature. And then they did the exact same thing for the control group. So then they wanted to be able to tell after X amount of time being on this diet, after so many weeks on this diet, did they see a change within the group? And then did they see a change between the groups? Now, what we're most interested in and what the study is actually investigating is the difference between the groups. So between the control diet and between the vegan diet. But what's, you still need to be paying attention to the differences within the group in this situation because if they are instructed to do certain things and then they do not follow those instructions, it's going to show in the within group measurements. And interestingly enough, that's exactly what we find. If you look at the within group measurements for energy expenditure, you see a 13% increase in expenditure in the vegan condition, even though they were instructed not to change their physical activity levels. However, this change was considered non-significant, but I did want to point it out because of the next few points that I'm gonna be making. There was a significant decrease in caloric consumption in both groups. So you see a decrease in caloric consumption. You see a greater decrease in caloric consumption with the vegan group. So between the decrease in caloric consumption as well as the increase in physical activity or expenditure, I suppose I should say more, more aptly put, that means that there is a widening discrepancy between the amount of energy that's actually staying in the system in each person's body between the control group and the vegan group. The vegan group is clearly taking in less calories and expending more calories. Then looking at protein consumption, the vegan group dropped their protein consumption by about 33%. Now, of course, the proportion of the amino acids, we don't need to go through every single amino acid that's shown on that table. All you need to know is that overall, all the amino acids decrease with the vegan group. But that makes sense, of course, if you're gonna be decreasing your protein intake and changing the sources of your protein, of course, the proportions of each amino acid is going to decrease and the overall intake of each amino acid is going to decrease. Another quick point to throw in there is that the control group, as I mentioned in the methods section, was instructed to maintain their normal diet. And yet, for some reason, by the end of the study, they uh, reported that they had consumed less calories. So how does that happen? You get told, stick to your diet that you've been consuming for essentially your entire life. And for some odd reason, 
that group still was in a statistically significant caloric deficit. Something is off there. And then in figure two, what we find is something to, that's relatively expected. The vegan diet simply did better than the control diet. Looking at fat mass, visceral fat, so kind of the uh, non-subcutaneous, so not the fat that's kind of uh, aesthetically pleasing, more the stuff that's around your organs, uh, which is far more detrimental to your health if you have high levels of it, as well as their BMI and their HOMA, which is essentially a, a marker of their blood sugar levels. All of those improved in the vegan group, but they did not change in the control group. So that certainly shows that the vegan diet in this situation is preferential. Now looking at figure 3a, they're looking at associations between uh, different variables. So they're picking two variables and they're trying to figure out the association between those two variables. And what they find is that with decreases in animal protein, you see decreases in fat mass. And that is what they found with the vegan group. Now, on the other hand, they also looked at plant protein. An increase in plant protein is associated with a lower fat mass. So kind of the opposite of what we just spoke about with animal proteins. They also looked at the particular amino acid leucine and with a decrease in leucine content, you see decreases in fat mass. And the final figure 3D looks at the particular amino acid histidine. As histidine decreases, you see decreases in blood sugar, looking back at that uh, HOMA figure that we were uh, just discussing. So clearly every single one of these associations is in benefit of the vegan diet. Now some noted points before we get to the conclusion discussion section of this content is that with greater essential amino acid consumption, which would be typically higher in the control group, you see increases, or they mention that in other papers, uh, essential amino acids lead to a greater insulinogenic response, meaning a greater level of insulin release. On the flip side, interestingly, with a what's typically seen in a vegan diet is greater levels of non-essential amino acids. And those non-essential amino acids have a counterbalancing act on insulin. They actually decrease the levels of insulin in the body. And on top of that, they actually also increase glucagon. So they increase the gluconeogenic response from the liver. The liver then starts to pump out more glucose because it's thinking that uh, the body is going through essentially a nutrient deficient mode or situation. So it starts to go through gluconeogenesis and of course then you might also see increases in lipolysis, so kind of fat breakdown. And they presume that that might be one of the mechanisms as to why you see decreases in fat mass with the vegan group, but you do not see that with the control diet. And the final point of note is that the vegan diet group consumed 75% less BCAAs once they switched over to the vegan diet from the diet that they were on previously. So what conclusions can we make from this? What are our discussion points, our primary discussion points? Well, they didn't control for calories. That's a big deal. Uh, so we can't exactly gloss over that. And I always mention that in other papers that I dissect. But what we can say is that with a vegan diet, if you're not controlling for calories, you're going to see better outcomes uh, when it comes down to it. You are going to be able to most likely eat less calories uh, because of the nature of the vegan diet. The fact that it is low calorie and tends to be relatively high in its nutrient composition, assuming that you're doing it correctly and you're not consuming just a ton of candy bars. So most likely what's happening is that the vegan diet is promoting a caloric deficit, which is leading to decreases in, of course, fat mass. And as I mentioned, that's certainly associated with a betterment in blood sugar levels. So of course that's going to have an indirect impact. The vegan diet would have an indirect impact at promoting better blood glucose levels, better fat mass, as well as better visceral fat, as well as better BMI. To be able to tease out the specific independent effects of the vegan diet on some of these outcomes like fat mass and looking at BMI and blood sugar levels, you would need to control for calories. You would need to clamp calories 
and then implement just this vegan diet. So then you know the variables are the vegan diet and the outcome. Now, another contributing factor to that, of course, could be the increases in the non-essential amino acids that you see with the vegan diet. And in that situation, then that could have a, an additive effect. I would say that most likely it doesn't have a pronounced effect, but it could have an additive effect in which you see greater lipolysis as well as greater gluconeogenesis and decreases in insulin response from this greater level of focus on non-essential amino acids as opposed to essential amino acids. Now, of course, some people might jump in and say, well, then of course that might affect our musculature. That might affect the ability to build muscle. So in an anabolic fashion, the vegan diet might not be uh, the most optimal, but in a health perspective, if you're not controlling for calories, if you don't want to control for calories, it may have some real benefit there that a control diet, a normal Western diet, just can't offer if, again, you're not controlling for calories. So although the non-essential amino acids may sensitize cells to take in glucose more readily, we can't conclude that that's the reason why you see decreases in fat mass and visceral fat and BMI and blood sugar levels without controlling for calories. And that is the big outcome of this study that they didn't control for calories. And not only did they do that, they didn't really uh, talk about the fact that uh, some of these individuals were instructed not to change their diet. And then clearly they did change their diet because they saw uh, decreases in their caloric consumption. And beyond that, there was a sizable discrepancy between the control diet consumption and expenditure and the vegan diet consumption and expenditure. The vegan diet had a much greater uh, level of caloric discrepancy in terms of decreased calories compared to the control diet. So again, I'm gonna say it for like the fifth or sixth time, you would need to control for calories to really to jump to any direct impact that the vegan diet has on fat mass and things of that nature. But no doubt, if you didn't want to count calories, the vegan diet based off of this study is a great alternative because it does allow you to decrease fat mass and all of these other health uh, measures simply by switching your diet from a traditional diet to a vegan diet. So with that said, that's what I've got for you. Hopefully you found it informative. And with that, I hope I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. See ya.